Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me here on this episode of Voices of Fowler. I'm your host, Eric Haddon, and this is a little bit of a departure from what we have normally done. We're incorporating video for the first time, but we're also involving some of our local candidates, uh, specifically for the race for city council. There are six people that are running this year, and Patrick and I were just talking a little bit off camera. Uh, Fowler has grown. We've grown significantly over the last couple of years, and now we're at a stage where it used to be everybody sort of knew everyone else, but now we've got new faces, new names, and so I thought it would be a great opportunity to invite each candidate on to hear a little bit about who they are, what they'd like to accomplish if elected, and understand a bit more about their platform. And so I am thrilled to welcome Patrick Jones. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Oh, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Now, Patrick, you are many things. You're a resident of Fowler. You're a veteran. Uh, thank you so much for your service. And you're a business owner. Um, tell me a little bit about what has motivated you to run for council and how long you've been here in Fowler. Um, I've been in Fowler over 50 years. Graduated from Fowler High School in 1983. Uh, my parents were actually the police and fire dispatchers in the apartments above the old fire station. So when I was in high school, I couldn't get in any trouble. They knew before I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, I love this little town. And I just see things that are happening right now that most of the citizens don't even know about it. You know, there's a major decision that a lot of our citizens don't even know that we don't have a local fire department anymore. When I mention that to them, when I'm talking to them, they have no idea. They go, really? So that that's a hot topic around town, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And for those that may not know, recently the city council has decided to um, subcontract out our fire services to Cal Fire, as opposed to our volunteer fire department, which we had for decades. Um, and so they have been recently disbanded. And yes, that has been a very hot topic. And I think that is part of the reason why this race is gaining as much attention uh, as it would ordinarily in an election year, uh, maybe a little bit more under the radar, but the community is certainly interested. They're fired up as it were. Uh, and so whatever it takes for folks to get civically involved, certainly, but that is a, a point of your campaign. This is something that's uh, near and dear to your heart. Obviously you have a history with it as well, but um, if you could tell me a little bit more about why you feel so strongly that we need a volunteer fire department. Actually, what we need is a full-time fire department is what we were in the process of getting done. Um, those things that we needed to do. Um, I've seen a couple of the proposals that were put forward. There's absolutely no reason why they disbanded our fire department. There were options out there. And the only people that are suffering right now because of that are the citizens here in town. Um, because if our station, which is station 82 out on McCall and American, if they're out on a call, the next closest could be Easton, down on Mountain View Avenue, Thalma, you know, it's just whoever's available, you know, so we're just kind of at the mercy of everybody right now. You know, if they have a major incident, you know, is Fowler truly going to be covered? Which even with our volunteers here, we would still have mutual aid and we still have mutual aid contract, you know, with Cal Fire. You know, there's absolutely no reason we couldn't have kept our fire department and left them as volunteers under Cal Fire until they said they were trained good enough to take over. Now, this decision has seemingly been adjudicated by the current council. Um, if elected, what, if any, change would you try to enact to reverse that decision or potentially change the outcome of that decision? Um, from an outside perspective, it seems as though the wheels are already in motion and we're sort of done with that. Um, what would you do differently? Well, like I said, I've seen some of the proposals and they will work. They just need a council in there now that needs that makes their own decisions. They're not being led down the path. And right now our council is being led. They're not making their own decisions. You know, they're basically following what the person wants. Okay, yes, 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 let's do it. All right. And that that's you gotta have a free mind. You gotta make these decisions on your own. Sure, talk, 
with amongst yourselves, your other councilmen, but it's got to be your decision, you know, and if I feel strongly about something, I have no problem being the lone no vote. But everybody in the public's going to know why I voted the way I did, you know, and I won't be popular on all my votes. You know, there's going to be some citizens that say I should have did this or that, you know, but I'll have a reason to explain to them. You know, my door at my dojo is always open. You know, any questions, comments, complaints before the election, after the election, I'm here. You know, I'm going to be that councilman that's out in the public, not just when I need your vote. Interesting. Um, now, I gave the community, speaking of community members, an opportunity to submit questions uh, prior to our interview, and we received uh, quite a few. And if you're ready, I'll ask you some of them now. I think they're fairly germane in terms of what we're talking about. Um, Rebecca Rodriguez was one of the first ones to submit. And just for context, I asked them to kind of limit it to three. There are some duplicates here, so um, we will focus on the ones that are, are unique and singular. Uh, but Rebecca Rodriguez would want to know... Uh, what do you think are the most critical issues and concerns in our community and with our city council? Transparency. They need, their their decisions have to be completely transparent. There can be no more backroom deals. The, those days are over. Those days are long gone in the past. Everybody has to be honest, have great integrity, and be willing to stand up for the citizens. You know, yes, I'm a business owner, but I want to do what's best for every business owner, every citizen, not just my own interest. And one thing I am telling the people when I go out and talking to people and I've started is they ask, what do you promise me? And I said, I can't promise you anything because unless I get two more councilmen to vote with me on what I'm trying to do, it doesn't go nowhere. So if I promise you, if I already lied to you, and that is one promise I'll make, I won't lie to you. Great. No, that's a, that's a great answer. Speaking of that, honesty, um, another one of the questions that Rebecca asked was, what is your definition of integrity? What does that mean to you? Integrity, there's a, there's a ton of different definitions for integrity. Um, you have to stand behind your decisions. You, you have to make your decisions based on what the public is looking for because you are their elected leader. Um, without integrity, there, there's no way that I as a council member can sit up there in those chambers and make a decision that I expect all the citizens to follow when I don't even follow the rules. You know, so you, you have to have the integrity enough to know the decisions you're making are not just affecting yourself. They're affecting everybody in town. They affect everybody in town, no matter where you live. Certainly. No, I think that's that's a great answer. Um, moving on, Sarah Lee Jones. Uh, now, you've you've mentioned your military service in your ads. I think you mentioned that you're a, a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, Sarah Lee Jones asked how long you were in the military for. I went in in 1983. I served 26 years. And when I retired, I came back home. I've always had a home address here in Fowler. Because um, I always knew I was going to come back home because this has always, always been home. Um, so it didn't matter where I was in the country, in the world, I knew I was going to come back to Fowler. Uh, Sarah Lee asked a follow-up question. You mentioned your experience in the military, your experience as a business owner, and having been a community member here in Fowler for as long as you have. She asks, how do you think your experience will help you in the council role? Your, I assume she's referring to life experience, career experience. Um, how do you think that's going to affect your, your leadership style and capabilities? With uh, 
some of the military experience, pressures you're under, uh, deadlines you're under, um, keeping a clear head, keeping an open mind, a clear head, um, knowing when to listen and knowing when to speak. Because I believe there's a lot more talking that's going on right now and they should be listening a lot more. The councilmen should be listening to what the public wants. You know, we are their voice for the city. You know, if we're not doing what they want, then I'm sorry, we need to be voted out. No, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I mean, um, that was sort of the premise and the thesis behind getting together with the candidates, um, understanding that in a representative democracy, your ability to vote for the candidate that you feel most closely represents your values. That's very, very powerful and very unique and uh, should be absolutely treasured and utilized whenever possible. Uh, I think people take it for granted, quite frankly. So, um, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, Jill Martin asked a question. Uh, in regards to the fire department, which we've we've touched on, um, I'll ask you. His question was, "Do you feel the fire department issue was handled properly?" I think you've you've spoken to that, but if you have anything you'd like to add, um, certainly you, you can. Um, I, I do feel strongly on the fire department, as I stated earlier. Um, no, it wasn't hot handled correctly. Um, I know Mr. Martin. He got up, and he was in fire service. He was also um, I believe a police officer. Um, the way it was, the way it was handled was just completely one-sided. You know, they had all these hearings where the public was there, the public voiced, vo voiced their opinions and concerns, complaints, and they fell on deaf ears. We had one councilman that stood up for the firefighters. Everybody always wants to say, I'm all for Fowler, I'm all for Fowler. Okay, well, that vote was completely not for Fowler. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, understand your position. Um, he also asked a, a follow-up question, and I believe you're correct. In my communication with him, he did mention that he was involved in law enforcement uh, professionally, and so I think this is kind of frames his question as well. Uh, but he wants to know if you agree with the way the police chief was hired, our most recent uh, police chief, who, again, for context, was a candidate when Fresno was looking for their next police chief to replace Jerry Dyer. And if I believe the facts correctly, ultimately the search continued. Uh, they did not find an internal candidate. He was not selected, and they started a national search, uh, which ultimately led to the chief they have now in uh, Fresno. But this candidate was selected and put through the hiring process fairly quickly here in Fowler. And so that raised some eyebrows as well. Well, I have the utmost respect for Chief Reed. I've spoken to him here at the dojo. And I told him, I said, your qualifications are impeccable. You know, the only thing I disagree with is you should have went through a search, the city should have still done a search, opened it up. If Chief Reed was truly the best candidate, he would have still got the job because of his qualifications. You know, what, what does concern me is, okay, he was passed up twice by our, our city manager now, Aaron Fowler, was he, she, was, he was, she passed him up twice. Okay, so he wasn't good enough for there, but he's good enough for Fowler. And like I say, no disrespect to Chief Reed at all. He's a very nice gentleman. I've had conversations with him. I just think it needed to be, we need to have a transparent process on hiring our all, all of our upper level people within the city government. Our, you know, fire chief, police chief, city manager, you know, our finance director, any of our directors, we need to go out and find what's best for Fowler, not just by somebody saying, hey, this is the best that's out there. Until you search, you don't know that. Hmm. So, so you're proposing a, for all of these executive level positions, a broader national or statewide search for a candidate, um, not simply entrusting it to the city manager. Right. And we, it's the same way we did when we hired uh, Chief Alcaraz. You know, they went out and Chief was the best qualified candidate we had and the council chose him. Um, 
we just need that process. We can't keep flip-flopping back and forth. Do we go by process? Do we just go by word of mouth? You know, there has to be a process set, put in the books, and that's how we follow it every single time. You know, the lower level employees, okay, yes. You know, they fill out their applications and, you know, they, they, go, through a, they go through a process like that. You know, I feel they would, somebody who wants to work in public works fills out applications, gets interviewed, gets hired. I feel that's how we did with this chief. He, he applied for the job. He got interviewed for the job. He was picked three to one. Very good. Um, there was a question that was asked by uh, multiple people, and you quite, I'll be completely frank, I've sort of wondered it as well. Your campaign slogan on your sign is putting the C back in community. I'm curious what that means to you. It, there's a few different definitions for it. The C back in community. The first one at the top of the list is change for a brighter future. We have to make changes for Fallon. We are going to grow. We can't stop growth. But we need to grow the right way. Our infrastructure needs to continue to grow with it. Our water. Everything needs to grow with it. Our public works, our police, fire. If we don't, we will end up like other cities that grew too fast. That They just grew way too fast. The, the second one is complete transparency. The city has to be completely transparent. You know, we have a city person that does all the bookkeeping and everything. We should be able to set those books out on the table, any accountant walk up to them and be able to balance that budget. There should be no, okay, this money went here, but we moved it here. We did this to do this, to do this, to do this, you know. We still have, I believe it's one or two years that still haven't been budgeted from the past. So we need that. The next one is caring for all citizens and our children. That's one of the main reasons I opened the martial arts school. We needed it here in Fowler. Those are the things we need here in Fowler that the whole community can get behind. You know, we need a bank. <laughs> we need a, a pharmacy. You know, we're an incorporated city. Carruthers is unincorporated. How, how is that, that an incorporated city is less than an unincorporated, and I don't know the, the population out in Carruthers, but it's nowhere near what Fowler is. You know, so what, what are we doing wrong? Who are making these decisions that is causing all this strife right now in Fowler? And I'm sorry, it's our council and our upper management within the city. Kind of stepping away for a moment, you've had the opportunity to watch Fowler grow and change over the last 50 years. When you think about the next 5, 10, 20 years, what does the future of this community look like to you? Like I said, we're going to continue to grow. I would like to see the business interests grow, you know, by local, you know, support all the small businesses here in town. But we are growing. I believe our population is over 7,000, 7,200 now. I haven't seen the number for the census. Um, we have one grocery store in town. You know, we need we need something else as far as a grocery store. Um, you know, we have a you know Dollar General. You know those type of items and everything. We just need more for the people to choose from. And if they're here in Fowler, the tax revenue is still going to come to the city. So why not let them come in? You know, and not in droves. We've got to build responsibly. You know, we have to let them come in responsibly because if we don't, then we get, then we're outgrowing ourselves and we don't have the resources to back it up. Right, certainly. Is there, before I let you go, is there anything that you want to touch on? Anything that you want to say? The floor is yours. Um, me and a couple other citizens filed all the paperwork. We got everything all ready to go, done, turned it into city hall, went to the city attorney. He sat on it for, I think the total 15 days, 
which was the amount he could sit on it, I believe. And it was to make Fowler break us into voting districts. That way, each section of town will vote for their councilman. And that section of town can hold that councilman responsible, you know, for that, for their area. And we want to break it in to four sections and have the citizens vote for the mayor. Okay, right now, the five sitting councilmen vote for whoever's going to be mayor. So whoever gets three votes, that's your new mayor. And the citizens have, have no say in that, none whatsoever. Because they voted the councilman in, they make that choice. And I believe we're big enough now. We need districts. And us as citizens, we need to say who we want as our mayor. Speaking of the topic of mayor, and I'm, I'm going to ask you a fairly pointed question because I think it was done in such a public form, it was hard to ignore. Uh, but one of the sitting council members uh, stated publicly on local television that he was going to announce his candidacy, uh, he'd make a run essentially, uh, for the mayoral position, which means he needs the necessary votes in order to be uh, voted into that position. If you were elected, would you support Council Member Carnig and his mission to seek the position of mayor? Right now, yes. He is the one that could really help make change in this city. Um, I stand behind Carnig. You know, I know he's got different announcements that are going to be coming. Um, he was our lone councilman that fought tooth and nail right up to the last minute to keep our fire department. You know, and what just burns me is they made that decision. They got rid of our fire station. In the very next meeting, $500,000 appears out of nowhere that we just come across. Okay. You know, it just needs to be changed. And I believe Carnig is the one that can facilitate that change the way it needs to be facilitated. No more backroom deals. Everything transparent, everything up front. If you can't do that, the way I feel, I'll run. If elected, I'll run a second time. If I don't have one major thing that I get done, I will step back and let somebody else try That completely breaks the mold of almost any modern politician uh, in today's era. Uh, of... I know, I know. <laughs> but no, I, I applaud. Um, but but uh, you know, I, I think that's that's a good thing. You know, maybe it is time. Yes, we need politicians on our council, um, but we also need rethinking politicians. Like I said earlier. We're elected by the people. It's time that the council members do what the people want. As for too long now, it is not the people. They need to get more involved. They need to be at these council meetings. They need to voice their opinions, oppositions, approval, but they need to be at these meetings. Um, they are video live stream now, which is great. Okay, log on. If you can't get to the chambers, log on. They have to answer questions. If it's on the agenda and you ask about an agenda item, they have to give you an answer. But public forum or public comment time, you have five minutes. Take your five minutes, say whatever you want. They can't per se answer your question, but they can look into it and get back to you or put it on an ag a future agenda but put it back in the people's hands, you know, and that's where it belongs. Mm -hmm. I, I will ask you, you know, in, in closing, because you mentioned the notion of the citizenry getting more civically involved in coming to city council meetings. We are enabling technology that now allows you to virtually attend. Granted, it's not the same experience. A lot of these tools have been there and have existed before, um, but civic engagement on a local level, on a national level, is fairly low. Uh, you're obviously a big advocate for getting civically involved. Why is that so important? Um, 
because we are the ones that live here. We have to make sure the decisions being made, our voices are being heard. Um, and if we don't speak up, it's gonna just be status quo. They're gonna make the decision, you know, based on whatever. I mean, before I make any decision, I'm gonna verify things myself. I'm gonna do my own investigation and research on it. And then I'm gonna make a educated decision on it. You know, and if I can't, I'm gonna find the answers that the people are looking for. You know, I, I have, like I said, I have no problem being the lone no vote if I strongly feel something that, that ain't right. You know, I will stand up for every citizen in this town. You know, no matter where you live, what part I wanted to, I want to be the councilman for everybody in this city. You have a question, you come up, you ask me. Right now, I'm on the Recreation Commission here in town. I'm at all the city events. I'm always out there. Sometimes we see our councilman. Most time we don't. You know, how, how can you be for the citizens when the citizens don't see you until they need your vote? Well, that sounds like a great place to conclude. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? Just get out and vote, people. Now is your chance for the change that you want to see happen. Your mail-in ballots are going to come out, I believe, on October 10th. Um, regular voting day is November 8th. So get out and make your make your vote count because this is a very, very important election. Changes have to be made. Well, with that, Mr. Jones, thank you so much for joining me as my guest here on Voices of Fowler. Good luck with the upcoming election, and we'll see you on the campaign trail. All right. Thank you for having me.